Hey everybody, Invisible Katana here doing my spoiler discussion for Justice League Dark. If you guys don't want any spoilers, I did a spoiler free review already, so there will be a link in the description if you want to check that out first and then come back to this and you can put whatever you want in the comments. But just to start from the very beginning of it, I really like what they did with people hallucinating and stuff like that and it just being like this crazy dark thing where it's like some, like tons of people eventually when they actually have the Justice League together, it's like, yeah, it's like, I thought it was going to be like a couple of people and it's like, and there are incidents across the world and she just hits a button, they do this in everything, but just like buttons show up and it's like that might as well be a million, you know, millions of people, just random dots across the world. So it was interesting the way it started. I thought maybe these people um, were targeted for some reason or something like that. There was something, I don't know, that there was a place that they were. I was thinking very like it was a localized thing where something magical happened and then these people left and the effects finally started to hit them. But even without that, the effects were very serious. Like it starts off with this woman, um, you know, hallucinating, and you can tell she was hallucinating because it starts off pretty simple, and like the de it's a demon that gets out of the car, so it's like I think she's hallucinating a little bit. So it starts off that way, and then she's just hitting a ton of people. It's like they're just people in the road, and she's just killing them and everything. And then um, I believe that was Wonder Woman that first stopped her, and so that was bad enough. She killed like a bunch of people. Granted, they did the typical um, cartoon stuff. They did the typical television stuff where people just stand there and get hit all the time, like. They literally have a scene, she's down the road, and there are a couple of people towards, like, the front of the, uh, the shot, and the car is coming down, and they're just standing there, like, <gasps> and, like, both of them get hit, and it's, like, five of the people that were hit in this sequence of her going crazy were standing in the road <laughs> as this car is coming down, and then nobody was moving, they were just, like, everyone was a deer in the headlights, but it was still a serious moment, and then we go to the part with Superman, where he's in Metropolis and it's this guy who's like freaking out his wife. He's like, you know, what did you do with my family and stuff like that? And it is his wife. And it was really interesting. Um, I, this kind of didn't really go anywhere. It was just meant to be the beginning of everything. But it was really interesting how it started off because the woman was able to realize that, well, I guess she wasn't able to realize. I thought when she looked back, she saw that they were all people. But you know, it was funny the way they did it where you know she looks back and she's freaking out and he freaks out. But we find out you know, she freaked out for like half a second compared to this guy because they find out in like the shed that he has, which my girlfriend perfectly explains Superman. He like blew up the door for no good reason with laser vision. It was really funny. But that guy had been freaking out for a super long time because there were just bodies in the shed because he killed all these people that he thought were monsters and he thought he was like saving other people. And it was very interesting how dark he got. And then of course he goes to Gotham and of course it, I mean, I don't know. I mean, there were like a dozen people in there so I'd say that was the darkest part but actually seeing this woman freaking out she's like I gave birth um, to the devil and stuff like that and she seemed like she was calming down for a second and then the baby started to cry and she's like nope and she like flings the baby off the rooftop and so he saves the baby it's like okay he saved the baby everything worked out fine it was kind of like the other ones where the bad stuff already happened, but they stopped it. But then we find out that she jumps off herself after he actually saves the baby. She kills herself. It was like, man, that's, that was really intense. Like, she jumped off this rooftop after killing what she thought was a demonic baby. So, that was just a really crazy opening sequence, and then they get into it. And I mentioned this in my spoiler-free review. That's where we actually get to see two new members of the Justice League, which was really awesome, except they don't show up in this movie because it's about Justice League Dark. And that is um, Jon Stewart, Green Lantern, and Hawkman. And I thought that was really awesome. And I think Flash was actually missing in this movie. I don't think he showed up at all. I think Cyborg was there during the meeting, but I don't believe... Or no, Flash. I saw Flash in there. Like it was during. I mean, none of them were focused in this film, so we didn't really get to see them. We didn't even see... Um, like, Hawkman, Cyborg, and Flash don't even actually get scenes in this. Like, Superman had the opening, and so did Wonder Woman, and they both show up during the end of the film, and so does Jon Stewart to actually fight, but Hawkman, Flash, and Cyborg, I guess it just would have been too much if, like, the entire Justice League actually came in to fight them, because they all got taken over, but they didn't even get, like, they got shots of, like, panning shots, and it's like, alright, next movie, sure, we'll bring them back, but... For this one, we got to see that they added some new members in between the Justice League movies that we've had, which I thought was definitely really cool. And they're expanding the roster. Maybe we'll get Hawk Girl in the next one. Um, maybe they'll start doing kind of the Justice League Unlimited thing where we start to get some of the lesser-known characters as well that have joined the Justice League. Um, 
I would love that. I think that'd be really cool. Eventually, I don't know, I would love to see them do um, a TV show based off of the animated universe that they've made, but they made it for the films and it's very specific because they've, they've done things that are so good in this uh, the animated universe. I would love to see it just done on a weekly basis, but we already got Young Justice coming back, so I guess I'll, I'm fine with that. But I like that we got to see those characters at least and then they go through, you know, everything that's happening. Bruce ends up being taken over and he sees Constantine and it's like, all right, I got to find John Constantine. So we see Zatanna, he ends up going to her, he gets taken over again and that's when things start to kind of unfold for him. We get Constantine and the team really builds up fast. It's like, all right, Batman goes to Zatanna, Batman gets taken over and she realizes that John needs to talk with her. It's something really, really serious even though she doesn't want to talk with him. And it's like, all right, if it's this serious where Boston is coming in, we can go see John. So it was cool the way they did it. It was really fast paced. Um, we get the, you know, we start getting our origin stories and stuff. We see John when he's with, um, the other guy who's, uh, fused with the demon and they have their little, uh, their little poker game, which I thought was funny. But that was a cool sequence and when they first have the demon come out, I really loved that. And he's rhyming and stuff and the three demons are like, you know, we can beat him up. And at first they were freaking out. I was like, you know, you know, there's no need to do this. Like, we can put our weapons down, so let's talk about this. And then the oldest of the demons is like, we're the Demons 3, like, we're, let's kill everybody. And they got destroyed. Like, he decapitated two of them, and he just, like, pierced the other dude straight through the chest. And it's like, okay, well, they're done. But they, of course, end up surviving because they're demons. They just go back to hell. But I love the way they did it. Everybody kind of came together really quickly. We end up meeting uh, Richie. And, you know, that's a fairly quick sequence. And it's like, all right, well, we go from here to here. And then it goes back to Richie, where we think he died. And then that's how they bring the immortal guy back into the play. And it was really simple. And I liked the way it went. And then, of course, we find out that the character we thought was the villain wasn't actually the main villain. And he was actually being used by Richie, who was the actual main villain, because he wanted to become immortal. And sadly, he was tricked, and that brought out the demon um, that had been in entombed inside the stone for like 500 years so I like the way it played out it was really fast paced they just went through everything we got to meet Swamp Thing in the middle there and that was like my biggest disappointment um with the whole movie is that he wasn't in it that much and seemingly they killed him and that was like holy crap like they killed him and they killed uh the the human version of well he, they killed the human character the guy who was fused with the demon and I was like okay I thought this was going to be different because I'm assuming this went based off of the recent Justice League Dark comic series and I wouldn't be surprised if that happened in the comics. I'd be a little surprised especially with Swamp Thing like it's not like they put him in everything it's just to bring him in and kill him off so that would have surprised me if that's actually in the recent comic storyline but to have them die off like that really shocked me I was like oh I mean I know it's Justice League Dark and characters die especially you know whenever Constantine's involved somebody's got to go. But I was so shocked. I was like, man, I thought that they'd be adding these characters into future films and stuff. And it was like, nope, here they are, and there they go. And it was really sad with Swamp Thing. Like, that actually, that was like an actual sad sequence. And he, he literally has like a tear coming down. And I was like, wow, that was actually a really messed up sequence. And he's like ripped. The human actual body is ripped from uh, the actual Swamp Thing. And the body just falls. And I was like, maybe there's a chance that this works because if they save this body I didn't know the details of the character and all that stuff so I was like maybe if they like catch a body or whatever it's like no I don't see anybody doing the cool street you know dive catch or anything he was gone like that the bodies were ripped apart human body just flails to the ground and the Swamp Thing just erases so I don't know enough about Swamp Thing to know if there's even the possibility of bringing them back but that was surprising to me I was like wow that Swamp Thing is gone already and so is this other guy he gets killed so it was very a very surprising ending that not all the characters survive just simply put with it being a Justice League film even if it's Justice League Dark I just thought yeah they figured everything out teamwork they beat this freaking thing up Swamp Thing went like absolutely insane like knocking them through buildings and that was like the most chaotic scene and he's like you know flying through streets like I wish they would have shown it like he went through like city blocks as vines bursting out of the road I'm like that it, that would be like millions and millions of dollars to fix that road but you know it was just a cool action sequence and I really loved that and the action in general I thought was pretty well done and it, it was just a good scene and the way it ends and everything but it was surprising that they killed off those characters like that and you know we go off into whatever
whatever they're going to do next with Zatanna and Boston and Constantine as well as the uh, physical embodiment of magic within the house. So I thought it was a really cool way to end it and I'm excited to see what they do next. Really love this movie. I know there's not too much to talk about as far as spoilers. I feel like there wasn't too much to this film but in a good way it was just like this happens, that happens. They have the lines that reference these characters if you know them. We get to meet, you know, the lesser known characters. We get the origin stories in what personally I consider to be a really well done way. It's like, all right, Swamp Thing, we might not know enough about, but here's, you know, some dialogue. It's not a full flashback, but here's some dialogue about it. Uh, the demon and the guy being the Knight of Camelot and stuff. It was like, all right, here's a full flashback for that because that also happened to link up with the actual main villain of the film. But it was really well done. And then even the middle fight sequence I thought was super badass too. Like both of the like big fight sequences I thought were amazingly well done. Like the indie one I really loved and the like, I guess it wasn't the halfway point, but the first big fight that they had where they thought they stopped the main guy. I love that fight sequence, especially uh, with Zatanna dealing with the dark magic where it's not something that she's familiar with and controlling. And she went nuts and it was, um, very reminiscent of, you know, Raven when she loses control of her abilities and she, especially at the end when she made like this giant blade, I love that and Constantine stops her but she shatters the blade and forms all the shatters into smaller blades like I can find a way to kill him and not kill you like I'll get to this guy and I love that sequence and he's able to help her control it but that was really good like she wasn't able to use her magic for most of the sequence and everybody else is getting beat up. Constantine uses whatever that cool crystal thing was that like saved his life. I thought that just looked cool. Um, Batman was doing his thing. We see demons fighting each other. It was really fun. I was like, that was a great sequence. And the ending scene, I think, was just as insane and amazing, especially uh, before they even start the fight, where Destiny's like just going through the city and he's making people go crazy and that they picked up that really dark tone again where it's just people fighting people. Like people were just beating the crap out of each other. They don't really show anything super crazy because they could have shown people like getting thrown out of windows and all sorts of stuff. But it was just like the part where he pans through the um, through the road and they show like the office building and it's just people fighting. It wasn't as intense as it could have been, but I think it was really well done for sure. So I love the way they show the darker side of stuff uh, in this film. Definitely love the action sequences. Loved all the characters. It really sucked at the end when they did kill them both off because I was like, man... This makes me want to get into learning these characters a lot more. So, you know, it sucks that they had the character characters get killed off um, towards the end of the film, but it was really well done. I really loved it, and like I said, it, it makes me more invested to learn about at least the two guys that died. Boston, I wasn't super invested in learning more about him, but like Swamp Thing, um, it made me invested to learn more about how he went from human to that. Because I never knew that Swamp Thing was ever human. I, I just never knew that. I thought it was just always that creature. So I didn't even know that part of the backstory. The demon and human character, I, I never knew anything about them. I may have seen that character before and just not remembered it, but that's about it. So it made me interested. Like in that guy's story, like he becomes immortal because he's fused with this demon to save his life uh, by Merlin, you know, the Grand, the grand Wizard. And it was really cool. It was like, it just makes me want to learn, like, see that character struggle through 500 years of being fused with this demon that he doesn't want to ever let free because you never know. It could just go on a crazy rampage like the Hulk. And who knows who'll live and who'll die. So I love the way they did that with that character where he's able to control that. But, you know, people can force him to bring it out like uh, Constantine did in the beginning of the film. It's like he doesn't, all, he doesn't have 100% control over it. And it does kind of have, you know, if you're familiar with the Hulk, which I think everyone is, it has the elements to it, the Jekyll and Hyde thing, and I, I really love that. And I think with this, it's a little more interesting because of the immortal stuff, where it's like, over time, like they even referenced it at the end of the film, they bonded over 500 years, and the demon's like, you know, there's no other human I'd rather call brother, that sort of thing. And it's like, you can imagine how that went in the first hundred years where it's like, I'm so effing tired of this dude. I want to be separated from him. But over 500 years, they bond and stuff like that. And it was just interesting. It, it just makes me wonder, like, I'm sure there's some amazing comics out there about these two characters and what they go through as immortals fused together and just the crazy stuff they deal with. So definitely did a good job, um, at least getting me curious about some new characters. 
the fight scenes were really good. Boston did have a really great scene during the hospital stuff where he was saving people from an actual poop monster, which melted like the first person. I thought it would just be like people drown. The first person that died like turned to just bones. I was like, oh, this is like steamy crap. So I don't know. That was crazy. But definitely an interesting sequence. And he, he had some good moments. Like he saves the one cop and um, he makes a joke about the fact that I was like, geez, like I think he said like work out or eat like a um, a salad once in a while or something like that and he jumps out of the body because he was moving too slow but I love that that was really good I like the way they utilized the characters I think the comedy for it was good and I'm excited to see where they go with this if they you know pick it up again because like I said I'm pretty sure this is based off of the new 52 uh, Justice League Dark comic series that came out so you know who knows where they'll go with that if they'll stick to just adapting comic stories or if they'll make something um, a bit unique, which is what they're kind of doing now, like the Teen Titans stuff and the Justice League thing. They kind of skip past all the extra stuff where it's like, this was the first Robin and everything. It was like, nope, screw all that crap. Here's Damian Wayne. Like, that's all we got. So we got Batman and Damian, and now Damian's a part of the Teen Titans. So they're just jumping ahead in time, which makes a lot of sense because they kind of did that with the New 52 as well. I don't think they started everything all over. Um, their universe technically restarted, but I'm pretty sure some of the characters, like, I'm pretty sure Nightwing was still Nightwing, like, Dick was still Nightwing, he didn't, like, become young Dick Grayson again, so, kind of what they did with the new 52, but I like where they're headed, um, with the animated films, and I'm glad this was, you know, our first big crossover into Magic, and it was really well done, really loved it, the action was good, comedy was good, characters were well done, action sequences, definitely some of my favorite action sequences, um, in within the recent films I think I'd have to rewatch the old ones because they come out like once you know once a year or once every other year so I always forget a lot of the important or like epic scenes from some of the older movies except for Aquaman bringing that shark out of the uh water in the Justice League movie the second one you can't forget a shark coming out of the water and eating like Black Manta that was freaking sweet so I'll never forget that but this had some great action sequences everything about it I thought was really well done but Love to know what you guys thought about this film. If you know the characters, didn't know the characters, are you invested now? Do you think this was a good representation of the Justice League Dark comic story that they definitely adapted it from? Um, were there other things that you wish they showed a little bit more? Like they had the house, um, the embodiment of magic within the house. She didn't really do much in this, but I'm pretty sure she does fight in that comic book. If I remember well, I didn't read that, but I like know the story a little bit. So I do believe she actually does fight during certain sequences, but they didn't do that in this. So that's something they might pick up in the second film with these characters. And if they do find a way to save Swamp Thing, then have him in there. Because they really, that was seriously the one thing that actually bugged me. was like, even though it sucked that the characters died, the one dude was at least throughout the film where it's like we see him as a human and we get his backstory and all this. Swamp Thing was like, I don't like John Constantine. I'll take you guys to this place because he might destroy everything. And then he was gone, and then he showed up at the end of the movie and has an epic fight sequence for, like, almost a full minute. And then it's like, all right, I'm going to beat you and rip you apart. And then he seemingly just evaporated and died. And I was like, well, dang, if they killed him, they didn't even give him a chance. So I really hope there's some way that they save him. That's, like, the one gripe I have about the whole film is that he wasn't utilized as much as I would like, and he was killed off at the end. So I was like, dang, we didn't even get to really get invested in them but it was like the one issue I had with it but like I said I personally love this movie I thought it was a really good one would love to know what you guys thought about it so please comment below in your favorite parts these favorite parts what are you looking forward to next with Justice League Dark as far as the animated films do you want to see them do more crossover stuff um do you want to see them more separated from the Justice League because they were fairly separated it was just Batman in this so I think they did a great job actually because they even showed the Justice League I didn't think any of them were showing up in this outside of Batman and it was like oh you see the whole Justice League in this and then it's like all right here's everybody and then here's the new Justice League so I love that personally because I thought it was just going to be you know something dark with Batman magic and the Justice League dark but it was like no Justice League got involved in it because that's what they do and then they got involved because specifically Bruce Wayne so I love the way they did it, but we'd love to know where you want to see them go with the Justice League Dark characters, what other characters you want to see added in, because there are a lot of magical characters, but not all magic characters get put into Justice League Dark, so I would love to know which characters you guys would like to see, and what you thought about the film in general, so please comment below, let me know, and thanks for watching.